17 years ago, I was at a summer camp in southern Indiana when the periodical cicadas emerged. Billions of cicadas, billions of insects flying around, buzzing loudly, clumsily falling on the trail and crashing into buildings. I didn't know why it was happening, but I was fascinated. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. I loved insects, I loved snakes, I loved things people often called creepy crawlies. And I saw a lot of other people that maybe didn't love them so much and actually took some joy in killing them and squishing them. And that really bothered me. So I tried to save as many of the little cicadas as I could. I tried to protect them and keep them away from the, the bad kids who were going to squish them. Of course, this earned me the nickname, Save the Cicadas Kid. It wasn't the most creative nickname, but it did sting. But here I am 17 years later, I'm a wildlife biologist, and I work with some of the lesser loved animals in the world, snakes specifically, and try to help conserve them, and try to help convince people they're worth conserving. So today, I want to introduce you to the periodical cicadas that you hear all around me. You may be a little nervous about them, they, you may be a little uncomfortable with them, but I hope by the end of this video, you'll feel better about all that, and you too may want to save the cicadas. You'll notice I have no problem letting it sit on my finger or my hand like this, or crawl on my hand. They're harmless. They can't bite. They can't sting. There's no reason to be afraid of these cicadas. But these cicadas emerge in such great numbers, I can understand why you might be a little nervous about that. So let's go see that. Let's go see the hundreds and thousands of cicadas and, and see what that feels like because it may not be quite as scary as you think. All right, so I am walking up to a tree where lots and lots of cicadas have come out of the ground. I'm actually gonna take my shoes off here so that I don't step on them. Maybe I can feel them underfoot and avoid stepping on too many of them. The roots of this tree have been nourishing these cicadas for the last 17 years as they grow. And now that they've emerged and their shells are falling to the ground and the dead cicadas are falling to the base of the tree, they kind of give back. Their nutrients will go back to the earth and back to the tree. Unfortunately, most of the cicadas that are still on that tree behind me won't make it. Their wings haven't developed properly. Maybe they haven't made it out of the shell. They'll never get to fly. But their sacrifice won't be in vain because part of the strategy of these periodical cicadas is to come out in such great numbers that they overwhelm or satiate the predators. So these cicadas will probably become a snack for predators that might otherwise eat cicadas that are fully developed flying around and trying to mate. But many of the cicadas will survive. They'll fully develop, they'll fly into the skies, and for a brief period of time, they'll get to really live it up They'll lay their eggs, and the next generation will be secure. Look at this behind me. The trees are practically moving with cicadas. There's so many of them. And the noise, the buzzing of these cicadas, is one of the loudest things you're going to hear in nature. It rivals the sound of a passing jet or a lawnmower. They're incredibly loud. If you can just appreciate the sheer amount of life back there, it's incredible. And how they can all synchronize their life cycles like that. And I hope at the end of this video, you feel a little bit better about it. And maybe you can even get closer to the cicadas and appreciate them a little bit more. Come to see them more like I do. Maybe you too will want to save some cicadas. <laughs>